1949 years ago was the Churban of Bayes Cheney. In between then, that was, yeah, that was Tisha B'Av. It's already brought in the Zohar that Es Gid Hanosha, Et Gid Hanashe, that that gematria of Et Gid Hanashe is Tisha Ov. When Yaakov was wounded, that created, prepared a weakness, a chulsha, that could be collected at any point in history when Klayasol would be deservant of punishment. Since Chuban Bayes, again and again, it's been repeated that date. As the Rebbe Shalom says, quoted by the Medrash, by the Mephoshim, that Atem Bechisim, when the scouts came back with a false report, Kal Yisrael cried about the situation, feeling sorry for themselves. Atem Bechisim, you cry, the cry for naught. This day will be set aside as a day for crying Again, if and when it's necessary. When is that necessary? When Klayasol bottoms out spiritually. When they fail and there's a need for cleansing, then this will be the priority day for the choice of that day for suffering and expiation. We have sources, historians indicate that the Barbanel is quoted as verifying it, that the Jews left, the expulsion from Spain took place on Tisha B'Av. <coughs> the major event in Jewish history, a quarter of a million Jews took out to leave rather than capitulate. You can imagine, hard to us to imagine what the world was like then, as anti-Semitic as the world seems to be today, is today. Then there were no police, no, no concern, no caring for anyone, let alone for Jews. And these Jews were now being thrown to the dogs, as it were. A quarter of a million Jews stayed and functioned as Moranos. Many of them, most of them. And secretly tried to be Mekayim Mitzvahs. Living in a paradoxical situation. That leaving, the Ababanal is quoted, was on Tisha B'Av, that expulsion. Most historians agree that World War I was never really solved the problems, never been a reconciliation. It was just patchwork, very superficial, taped together. And World War II is a direct, was a direct outgrowth of World War I. World War I, Russia and Germany declared war on each other that week of Tisha B'Av. And so again and again in history, it's a day of Peronius, and as the Ramchal says in the Derech Hashem, for us when we come to a place in time, It's a place. We're revisiting that place. We're re-experiencing much of the reconstructing, the sensitivities, the feelings, the emotions, and 
It's a day then to get more insight and connection to our history, to Am Yisrael. Babylon is quoted again as saying that had Ferdinand and Isabel, Isabella, known how much of a chizuk, a strengthening they gave to the Maimin and to the Yedidova, those who were enlightened, that it happened on Tisha B'av, of all the days of the year, it would have been worthwhile for them to rescind the decree rather than go ahead with it. They wouldn't have wanted that fallout to give that reinforcement. But they didn't take note of it, and it is. That's one way of getting a little bit of a handle on the idea that it's Koalain Mayat. It's a holiday. It's a paradoxical day, an ironic day, a day of mourning, a day of retribution, a day of expiation of sin, fasting and all the, the inuyim that we practice. And yet it's a mayat. We didn't say tachna. So some have a straightforward understanding of that, in that it's the day, according to Messias, that Mashiach will be born. So these are chevle leida, these are birth pangs, and it's something is in process. Chaim Velozhna is quoted as having been medayik that when Chazal say. Somebody mourns for Yerushalayim. He sees, he merits and sees it's simcha. It's phrased in the present tense. It should be future tense, especially if it's referring to Mashiach and this ultimate geula that will come and that we have to live through this period. Of the, of the pain to get to where we have to go. The choshech precedes the light. The darkness precedes the light. But it says, in the present tense. Reb Chaim compares it to Yaakov being inconsolable regarding Yosef because Yosef was alive, and the Gzeira, the Rebbeinu Shalom's edict, which is a gift to mankind to forget, otherwise people had tragedies, low Leno, they couldn't go on in life. It's a gift. As I also note that we take that gift and we use it to forget the giver. But the Rebbeinu Shalom gave it to us as a gift. But that's only true for the mess. If somebody's alive, then we don't forget. So it's understood that that is why Yaakov, because in fact, though he was told that Yosef was killed, Yosef was alive. So he remained inconsolable because he didn't come under the purview of that, of that takona, of that gift, because Yosef was alive. Similarly, if we remain inconsolable about the Beis Mikdash, it means it's still alive. It's imminent. It's happening somewhere. Maram Shik says something somewhat similar. Brings the Yemar on Chulin. Maram Shik quotes the Yemar as asking in a discussion over there that somebody asked for, a, for some gift, some nanju, I believe it was Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, Rabbi Yeshua ben Chananya, I think. Rabbi Yeshua ben Chananya. And in the discussion that takes place, Rabbi Yeshua says, the Rabbi, our Rabbi Yisham gives, he doesn't take back. That's the 
principle with which the Rebbeinu Shlolem interacts with Klai in history. Ask them Ram Sheikh, but the, the base Migdish was taken. We don't have a base Migdish. And even from base Migdish Rishon to base Migdish Shani, there were certain add-ons that we were missing that were left more than add-ons. They were crucial. The Shechina, the Chulu, the Chulu. Says the Maram Shik, it wasn't taken away completely. It's somewhere in, in the world. It's somewhere in the environment, which means it's accessible. It's somewhere hovering, waiting to land. It's in a holding pattern, circling, waiting, that Beismigdish Shlishi. Especially, according to those that learn that the third base Migdash is being built by the morning. Each tear that shed, each cry is another brick. And that is being built, many that say this, and that is the creation, the building of that base Migdash which when it gets to a certain point of completion, will descend. But it's being built by this morning. So in a sense, this, this Avelis is a positive Avelis. It's an Avelis that's building. It's not just remorse about something that was. It's building. It is, in fact, very very strange, the, the transition in the Posik in Eicha, Yemiyon Novi is remembering his being downtrodden, the suffering for his Averis. I'll remember this and I'll bow, I'll submit, and then suddenly there's a change which is not very clear from the simple read how it takes place. Zos, zos Oshiv Elibi. I'll return this to my heart. Al and therefore I'm going to hope. What happened? He's thinking about all of the history, the failures of Kladyasa. And he continues, Chazdei Hashem ki loy somno, ki loy cholu achamov. The Rebbe Hashem Zachamim has not ended. His chesed hasn't ended, his kindness, his mercy on Kal Yisrael. Chadoshem labkorem rabo emunasecho. Each day when I, when I awaken, I awaken that in itself, the mere fact that I awaken, the Rebbe Hashem took my neshama, he returns it. That's like a resuscitation, a uh, being, taken, uh, being taken from the dead even. Some of the Rafoshim, some of the, actually Chazal, say that the fact that we see history moves the ascendancy of one empire then they fall in another empire, and there's a respite in between. There's a time to catch, to catch our breath. The fact that there isn't one nation that rules throughout history gives us the breathing space and gives us this reinforcement that there's time and space and time that is space for us to, to do tshuva. So the chadoshim lapkorim, the fact that the, the ascension of one malchus and then it's falling, it's recession, another one coming up, so they're not there for eternity. So that, we can see, is already pointing to two things. One, the fact that Rebbe Nishan returns my neshama each each morning, it's a revival. Two, 
The fact that history moves in this direction, that nations, empires come and go and they disappear. Chelki Hashem Omra Nafshi. My my part, my portion is the Ribanish Solom. Al Kain Oichel Lo, therefore I will hope to him for him. There is a Chazal that connects this with Kriyashma. Chelki that my recitation of Kriyashma that recitation is my identification, the oneness of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that everything, his, everything that is now, everything that was and everything that will be is subsumed under the oneness of HaKadosh Baruch Hu's Hashikoha. We read in the Palsha of the Ori Miklot, there's a posik that says that the Shekhinah is in Eretz Yisrael, and it's shoichen within Bnei Yisrael. The Mephosh, the Be'er Yitzchok, I saw it quoted the name of the Be'er Yitzchok, I assume it's the earliest Be'er Be Yitzchok, it was a few hundred years ago. Be'er Yitzchok says that there are two realities that are being described here. The Shechina, which means the Hashgocha. Since the Shechina is in Klal Yisrael, there'll always be evidence that the Hashgocha to Klal Yisrael is different than for any other nation. Two, El Yisrael is different than any other nation. And it's the two coming together and the chemistry between the two is has been discussed here in the past, this land will be desolate. It won't work for anybody else. The Ramban says that's a posik of consolation within, within the Teichecho. It won't work. Even when we're not here, there's a certain consolation. Why? Because the land is a unique land, and it needs a unique people. Which people? Klan Yisrael. And... The, the Nitziv in the Amek, a Nitziv says that, but we do have indications, as I mentioned, by Yisheni. We said the Shechina wasn't there by Yisheni. What it means is that the, there's maximal revelation of the Shechina and there's minimal. Maximal is when it's evident that's by Yisrishen. Eretz Yisrael will always have a Shechina more presence than elsewhere. Even though, even though Chazal say, the Gemara Megillah, Ima Anoichi Betzor, the Ben Shalom follows us in the Chutz Lords, there'll be a special Hashkocha. Right? The Be'er Yitzor. The special Hashkocha and Klad Yisrael, that's the indication of the Shechina. But it's not as evident. It's not as revealed. It's not as dramatically obvious as when we're in El Tisol and it's manam kitikunon. Many non Jews note uniqueness of Jewish history up till and including today. Don't have another people that was separated from their land for a few thousand years and then come back? Is it the kind of rebuilding that we understand that Teirah wants to be here? No, not yet. But it does seem to be that we're a bit closer. The difference between us and those that want to quantify Ascalte de Gula, that the beginning of the redemption is that we say we don't have the halachic mandate in our time to determine how to express that aschalta de gula. And therefore we don't tamper with tefillah. But to recognize that something is afoot, that the Rebbe Shalom has brought us back here, 
and that there's a tzibur, there's an eilam, a growing tzibur of b'nai teira, yeshivas. How can we deny that? It's a reality. In the dayan elamasha, in the vroyas. But again, we don't have that mandate. We don't have that ability. Till Mashiach comes and there'll be another Sanhedrin, that's, that's not on the agenda. But to recognize it and to take it to Lev and the responsibilities thereof, Avada. Rav Shagra Faivu Mendelovitz Satsal, the founder of the first yeshiva gedayla in America, Tervedas. Rav Shagra at the 1948, when the state was declared, stood in the base medrash, gave a, gave a talk, quoted the medrash and Shira Shirim, that the beloved Sholach Yodi El he put his arm through the aperture to open the lock. Says the Medrash, that opening was not clean. It was full of crawling creatures. If Am Yisrael, in order to get back for Bayashani, it's an Avuaba Bayashani, they had to come on to the Persian Empire for their largesse for their goodwill, then there's a certain reduction in quod Shemayim. It's not Komamius. It's not Reish Galei that we're coming back yet. Nushar Rafael said, hence it seems to be that it's being emphasized that we're coming back with baggage that has to be corrected, improved. There are challenges in front of us, whether it's going to, this resource will be used in the right manner. Today, began a talk last week in New York by giving an announcement, in case people hadn't noticed, this was last week in New York, people hadn't noticed UNESCO came out with a statement that we are now in the month of January and it's snowing outside and everybody should act and perform accordingly. We live in a world of Sheker. But that doesn't yet mean that we're arrived. Adaraba, being dependent and the lack of real independence to our minds stems from the fact that we are yet lacking ourselves in our recognition of our dependency on Hakol Yochol, on the Rebani And so, Chadoshim Lachon, Rabba Munasecha, it's a time of seeing in the, the Golis itself, the very Golis, that it's threaded through with a certain kind of Rachmanas, of Chesed, of mercy and Chesed. By Sheni, the Chorban was Sinas Chinam. They had all kinds of achievements in spirituality, but there was a lack of fraternity, kinship, of a love of Klai Yisrael. Rameya Simcha in the Pausha of Tshuva is Medayek. That one Pasuk says, Vahashibosa Elubavecha, you will return to your heart. The next Pasuk after that says, Vishafta Adishan Lakech, you will return to the Ribbanishlav. 
says Rabbi Simcha there will be two distinct phases. Phase one will be Klal Yisrael coming back to a sense of kinship, fraternity, love of each other, identification with Klal Yisrael. And that is somewhere closer to the surface that each Jew scratches one, two levels to get off the layers of Golas, the caked layers, he can find a certain avas Yisrael, the love of other Jews. Once they get there, the next station is Vishafta Adesham Kecha. Going with that Ramea Simcha. Posik says, Yitain be'ofo pihu ula yesh tikva. Put his mouth down to the soil, maybe there is yet hope. There are three metaphors that are used for the ribui, the brochot of Klai Yisrael. Three metaphors that are used to the patriarchs, to Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. The offer, going to be as abundant as the as the soil everywhere. This earth. Chol. The sand. And also the kochovim. The Malbim differentiates and says that the brocha of Ofo, which would seem to apply to Chol as well, is that it's not really able to be counted. It's mono, it's measured, it's not counted. He's medayik and Absukim. Mispa, a number, we correlate with the stars. Because each star is a world of its own. That's his lotion. Each star is a universe. Do we understand the place of each star and its significance? No, that's why the Rebbeinish Lalem is Mayna Mispa the Kurkhovim Ula Kulam Shemos. He gives each one its name, its function. So the Ofa and the Chol are talking about the collective Bracha of Kalyasa. And the Kurkhovim is an emphasis on the individual. The individual, the particular Jew, and his uniqueness and his contribution. And there's something missing from the world if this Jew is missing. There's something missing from our march towards Mashiach if we're missing one Jew. Of course we go on until that happens. But we have to be davening at least and ideally trying to do something about that as we march towards history to meet Mashiach. Because it's that kinship. Rameh Simcha, in a magnificent flourish of beautiful peace at the end of Parshas Bamidbur, differentiates between Ofo and Chol. Ofo, you have clumps of earth adhere to each other. There's a certain moisture in the earth and they, it can form a goosh, it can form a clump. The sand doesn't form clumps. It remains individual kernels. That's why Ofa, Ofa Tichor, if it's broken down, it can become bottle to the, if it's taken in the right halachic manner to the earth where it's taken. Rameh Simcha compares the sand, the chol. That's when Jews are not united like Orpha. They're not adhering to each other. But still, quotes the Posik and Yeshayahu, that the, 
the, the sound, the roar of the nations is like the beating of the waves on the beachfront. And there, says Rameya Simcha, the sand resists the onslaught of the waves. And Kol Hamon Amim, the Kol, the sound, the roar of those nations is like the beating of the ocean. But even Jews who are not yet deeply connected like the soil, they're not adhering, but still they act as a bulwark on the beachfront against the onslaught of the nations. For most of our history, most Jews will resist assimilation. And then there comes a time where that becomes tenuous. But for most part, there is that bracha. That's the chol. Perhaps then, chadoshen labkom rabo amunasecha found, we see the chazal that connects that to kriyashma. Coming weeks, Pausha, Kriyashma. There's a chidor that says on Shema. The oneness of a Kodesh Baruch Hu and the oneness of Klal Yisrael as representative and being the, the nation that the Rebbe Sholem has chosen to bring that message to history to the world, to the world community. Says the Chidoi Kotzach Regev that when a Jew says the words Shema Yisrael, he is in fact addressing Klal Yisrael. Now, if it's Kabbalah's Ol Malchus Shmaim, the acceptance of the yoke, the Malchus of the Rebbe Nishim, He's the only king, and there's the oneness of a Kodesh Baruch Hu, all wrapped into one mitzvah. What do I need, Shema Yisrael? The beautiful piece from Meir Simcha and Parshas Bolok on the psukim that accompany Malchias, the sounding of the shofar that is the acceptance of the majesty of a Kodesh Baruch Hu in the world. The psukim there do not appear as they do in the Chumash. Suros Melech Bay, that's in Pasha's Boloch. Vehi Bishu in Melech, that's in Zeis HaBrocha. Hashem Yimloch Yelam Boed, that's in Sefer Shmos. So he brings a gun that says that Gemara wasn't makbid to bring it according to how it appeared. Rameh Simcha says there is a Seder. The Seder is present, past, future. Usruas Melech Bay is present. Vahibi Shuan Melech is past and Hashem Yimloch Yerolavoyed is future. And we take that sequence because, and that structure, because for a human being, present is always most important. Because he interacts with the world through his senses. That's the way he collects his data, interprets them. Present is urgent. It's existentially pressing. The past once was present. The future is a pure extrapolation. It's a long, fascinating piece there. Again, uh, if you want to be realistic, you say that you can say that, you have to say that Rameh Simcha wrote that with Uruch HaKadosh. If you want to be skeptical, you can say he was very clever. Rabbi Simcha continues over there and gives the different perspectives of 
HaKadosh Baruch Hu, of the Malachim, we won't go into that now. But let's just take that, that model, that mode. Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echod. Going with Rameya Simcha. Rameya Simcha in the Parsha of Tshuva says, first return to Klal Yisrael, then that's your springboard to connect to the Rebbe Why? I would submit because that's the solidification of the conviction of the unity within the diversity. We experience the world as so diverse, different people, different events, different things, but it's all one. But where do I feel this before I understand it? I feel it, and even the uninformed Jew feels it in relation to Klai Yisrael most often for most of our history. He feels that connection before he understands it and tries to, un to analyze it. So that's Shema Yisrael. It's a prelude. It's a preface to being the Kabul O Malchus Shemayim, the Yichud Hashem. It's a preface to see and feel my connection to Klai Yisrael. I feel it. I sense it there. And that's a springboard. Next, Hashem. Elokeinu in history, sometimes it's the, we experience the Rebbe as the God of mercy. Sometimes it's Elokeinu, the Rebbe of Din. That's history. Take that in brackets. Hashem Elokeinu, history, who sometimes he manifested himself this way and sometimes the other way. In the middle of the Holocaust, there was Midas Adin. Ultimately, Hashem Echot, that's the future. It'll all be clear that that which we thought was Midas Hadin was really Chesed. Do I see it now? No. Do I pledge allegiance to the principle? Yes. But if I don't see it, I don't see it. When the Jews are orthodic, they're adhering as clumps, as soil. That's going to be step one to Vahashi Bosa Elabovecho. That's the matzav. Like the Bel Yitzchok. Throughout history, there'll be clues the Rebbe Islam sprinkles throughout history. 25% of Nobel Prize winners are Jews. The Shechina, the Hashgocha, is in Klal Yisrael, even in Golas. The Rebbe gives us the clues that there's something special about this people. And there's something special about this Hashgocha coming back here. But there has to be a countervailing force for us to flex our muscles because the Doidi Sholach my beloved put his hand through the chord, still full of shortsim and remorsim. We need a UN, then we're not there yet. There's a ways to go. I remember after the 67 war, the movement, we can be a mavatal kinus, we have it all. We have it all. We can't even put up metal detectors to protect our police from being terrorized and murdered. We have it. But yet, something is happening. And a lot of Jews have been Mesa Nefesh to make this something happen and to keep it happening. On every front, those who are merely like the sand, like the hole. They just wanted space for Am Yisrael to do their thing. It's fair. But we're a step closer when it's awful, Dick. 
when it's clumps that adhere to each other. And the Novi alludes to that. Sarosi Bamedinos, wherever they're going to be sent, they're going to wind up an intellectual, an academic, a political leadership for their hosts. Way out of proportion to their numbers. An excellence that has no explanation, B'derech HaTeva. Those are the clues. That's the Hashkocha. That's the Hashros Hashchina, even in Golas. And so, Yitain be'ofa pihu. Put my, put his mouth to the offer. Ulai yesh tikva, maybe there is hope. If we can move from chol to offer, different epochs in history. Merely chol can hold out for a while. And we have to see the hashkocha in that. And it's unique. It's paradoxical, unique, confusing. Can't be reduced to simplistic explanations. But maybe if I put it in perspective, says the Novi, maybe I can put my mouth in, then it's awful, Dick. Xava Kabbalah says, Ofa, just like the soil contains the minerals that promote growth, Kladyasol, wherever they will be, will be the minerals for the growth of that space that they happen to be occupying at that time. Not like El Tisal, but something over there. That keeps us aware. That keeps us sensitive. And maybe, maybe that's part of the pshat. Chelki Hashem Omra Nafshi. My place, my peace. I'm a chilek. I am a chilek and I have a chilek. In the Rebbe Nishleim's Hashkocha. In that providence which has had Jews think, I suppose somebody once tried to analyze what percentage of the headlines in the New York Times, pardon the Nivel Pair, has been dedicated to Israel over the past 50 years. Genocide taking place in Sudan. Who cares? Bothers somebody. Somebody's interested. An Israeli soldier trips and knocks a lollipop out of a ch Palestinian child's mouth. Oh, he attacked him. It's an insane world. And it's not about to get better. We play the game on their court. Very hard to impose our rules. Do we have to do battle? Yes. But the primary battle is here, in this room. Wrestling with ourselves. Machashakim Hoshivani, Chazal say, in these dark pathways I have been placed, it's Golos, but it's a reference to Talmud Babli. Talmud Babli takes us through the dialectic, the Shaklavataria, the 
the process, it's confusing, it's challenging, but the payload is the payload. It's all the difference. I'll end with this. We read on Shabbos in the Haftarah, Tzion b'mishpot tipodeh b'shoveho b'tzdoka. I remember hearing it quoted also in the name of Rabbi Chaim Velozhna that America will be the last stop, a primary stop of the last stop as we march towards Mashiach. The excellence in America is going to be chesed. Tzion b'mishpot tipodeh. Here now it's a soul that's going to be learning. Rabbi Yosef Chaim Zonenfeld, before there were calculators or computers, pointed out, Tzion b'mishpot tipodeh. Tzion b'mishpot tipodeh is Talmud Yerushalmi and Gematria. V'shoveho b'tzdoka is Talmud Babli in Gematria. Five Ocon, childhood you did, pointed out to me, Chazal say when Odom Rishon was created, the Moach, the mind, was created from El Yisrael. The Lev from Bovel Vishar Rotsos. Bovel is Lev Vov. In Yerushalmi, when somebody holds a position, we say adaite, according to his mind. In Babli, we say alibe, according to his heart. So said Reb Feibel. The extension is that through the engagement, through the asik of Teva, the Mahashakim, it's a challenge. It's dark, it's confusing, it's elusive, it only suggests I have to bring it me a koach and I have to make it work. And that helps me in my battle with me. That helps me become who I have to be. And as I become who I have to be, then I can connect to the rest of Kal Yisrael. As the Gros says, no one excels in the Memches Dvoram Shatar and Niknus Behem. 48 ways the Torah is acquired, we need each other. Somebody excels in this Midah, somebody excels in that Midah. Rabos Bonus also Choyel, Choyel Begematria is 48. The At and Tira comes as a consequence, as a result at Aleph Atov of everybody pulling together. Perhaps one reason that it's phrased in the feminine is because we associate the feminine with the willingness to be a makabel, makabelis. Rabos bonus also, you have to take a feminine posture for a moment in order to listen to what the other and other has to say. The At. Feminine, or least our Corona comes as a result. And so the war continues. The Melchamta Shaltera, the war here, in battling ourselves, in trying to bring a little bit of light in so much darkness, and of course the being so sufficiently alert to be aware that the Yeshua is not going to come from out there. Anybody that's doing anything right has to be supported and applauded. But the Yeshua is going to come from here. Here is where it's going to be that energy. 
Chalki, my portion is with the Rebbein Yisrael. That's the, the Tikkun, the Navi says, that gives me hope, that gives me the optimism that we are gaining ground and moving forward. And each tear and each cry is building, cementing another brick in place in that base Migdash Ashlishi Bimheru Vyamenu.